Hello everybody, and welcome to part 8 of Barry Center Coordinates. In this video, we're going to be looking at something called Strong EFFT, which is basically an improved version of EFFT that we saw in episode 4. So, in episode 4, we saw that EFFT is essentially a, a way of checking for if two... Um, if two vectors are um, actually this is that's the distance formula um, it is a way of checking if two vectors are perpendicular to displacement vectors within uh, base inch coordinates and um, let me just fix yeah that is EFFT okay so you have two displacement vectors. The first one has coordinates x1, y1, z1, and the second one has coordinates x2, y2, z2. And in the proof, we arbitrarily set the circumcenter as the origin, which allowed us to take um, the dot product of the uh, of the a vectors, or of like the vertex vectors. And it also allowed us to take the dot product of two different vertex vectors, name it like A vector and B vector. We could dot those together, given that the circumcenter was the origin. And so in fact, and, and so since they were displacement vectors, we knew that x1 plus y1 plus z1 was equal to x2 plus y2 plus z2, was equal to zero. And in my proof of EFFT, I sort of did a manipulation at the end um, where the the right hand side we had uh, r squared times this cyclic sum. And what I did is I factored out an x1 and replaced x2 plus y2 with negative z2. And then we found that the cyclic sum basically ended up telescoping um, in its own weird, I guess, cyclic telescope. Um, but in fact, the proof offered in the document shows that this uh, factorization, or this cyclic sum, is actually equal to x1 plus y1 plus z1 times x2 plus y2 plus z2. And so since these were both 0, we got that this cyclic sum was 0. But if we have these two sums multiplied together, only one of them has to be 0. And so that's what strong EFFT uh, uses. Is that if we have two vectors, and if either one of them, two vec, and they're centered at the circumcenter, if either one of them have the sum of their coordinates equal to zero, then we have this result. So, in fact, we could just have a normal displacement vector, but if we wanted something else, something in terms of the circumcenter, then we can deal with that. And so, uh, one way we can deal with this is uh, well, this this basically opens up the range of of points we can use. Uh, strong EFFT is especially useful for the circumcenter and the orthocenter, and I should have put this in my vector geometry video, but the orthocenter, um, well, if if you consider the circumcenter as the origin, then the orthocenter is actually equal to the sum of the vertex vectors, and this basically is due to if you took any 
um, you would basically have that AH dot BC is equal to zero and you can just show that this if you were plug in H for um, if you plug in this for H you would get that this is true for all its cyclic varieties um, because you basically have BO plus CO dot BO minus CO stuff like that and um, you just get R squared minus R squared so anyway yeah so we can express the orthocenter as a vector in this form where x1 or I guess the ones I underlined x2, y2, and z2 are all equal to 1. They don't sum to 0 but as long as this vector sums to zero, uh, has coordinates that sum to 0 then we can use strong EFFT and it's very helpful. Um, and like I said obviously if we have something that's naturally centered at O let's say the vector AO. What we're saying is we're representing this as sort of 1, 0, 0. So let's think of vectors that would be perpendicular to this. Well, one example would be uh, the tangent to the circumcircle uh, at A. Uh, so we have uh, we have AO, and then we can basically construct a point, let's say T, on the tangent, which has coordinates x, y, and z. And um, these are normalized points, so they sum to 1. And we have that A is equal to 1, 0, 0, uh, normalized. So then we can get the displacement vector, which is x minus 1, y, and z. And we know that these sum to 0. And we have this vector, which sums to 1. But this one sums to 0. So we can use strong EFFT. And if you were to plug in these coordinates, then we get that 0 is equal to b squared z plus c squared y. This is the parametrization, okay, yeah. This is the tangent to the circumcircle at A in terms of the y and z coordinates of the point. And so in the video that will be posted on the same day as this video, um, I will show a, a geometry problem that I solve. And it's not an Olympiad problem, actually, but I, I use barycentric coordinates for the first por portion of it, and um, specifically this formula. So this is... Um, this is the tangent to circumcircle at A. And obviously you'd have cyclic varieties. Um, but yeah, this is it. Just strong E of T. It's really, it's really the same thing. It just gives us a, a wider variety of, uh, of power. So yeah, that's it for this episode. Or yeah. So I will see you in the next videos. Thank you.